In a quick tutorial the other day I showed taking three images and now I'm going to talk about how to turn those three images into an HDR that looks something like this or possibly this or this. So you can consider this part two to my automatic exposure bracketing tutorial from a day or two ago. I showed how on the Canon camera, and it actually didn't really matter that it was Canon, but I just showed how to use automatic exposure bracketing to take a series of pictures at your different exposure levels automatically. That's what the whole automatic part of the exposure bracketing is. And you do that usually to create a nice HDR image. Uh, there are cameras, of course, the Canon and Nikon both create HDR images internally uh, and do a decent job of it, especially the Nikon. The Nikon has some settings you can mess with um, and you can get a decent HDR out of it all in camera. Canon not as much, but you know, it does try to do something. But way better than either of those is if you take these three images that you've created separately, bring them back onto the computer and run them through some type of HDR program. First one I want to just very briefly look at, because I've never used it before, but I wanted to go searching for something that was free. Uh, there are other free options out there, but this was the first one I found that was Windows and Mac. It's called Luminance HDR. Now, I imported those images into Lightroom. I didn't touch them at all, just exported them out. Since I mentioned Lightroom, uh, I will give you a quick tip. You can do HDRs with raw images by taking just one. You don't have quite the latitude, meaning the range, but you can put one, H one raw image into Lightroom, create two virtual copies of it, change the exposure up to, down to, and then you have three images, your minus two, your middle exposure, your plus two. Then you can bring them into an HDR program and do a decent job. Again, you can do that by shooting raw because you have much more dynamic range built into that file by default. So, but I took three natural pictures, uh, brought them into this luminance program and just kind of fumbled and clicked my way through. I just want to show it to you to kind of compare to what a free looks like to something that might cost a little bit more money. So it's in here now. Um, I didn't have a whole lot of setting changes and you can go into your adjust levels and you have your levels. And so if we watch this little preview window down here on the right, I can drag this to the right and we can see that we're bringing up our brights and um, we are darkening our darks and so you can see that that's not bad but also by bringing up the whites a little bit I'm very similar to the original picture I was trying to avoid losing detail up there in that very top section which is difficult because it is very bright but that is often the point of an HDR one of the things that's really nice about coming back to the computer is as I said you have a lot of control and you can go very painterly looking or you can go very realistic looking and kind of work in between that. We also see we're getting some very serious chromatic aberration. See that little bit of purple up in there? So I'm just going to say this is fine. Okay, that's all I'm going to do with it. We have some other uh, options over here with little thumbnails and I could choose one of those. But you know, well here, let's let's go to that one real quick. There's what I'm talking about when I say painterly. This is, does not really look, uh, this does not look realistic. You know, I have some operations here. I can bring the tone mapping down just a little bit and I don't really see a change over there. And I honestly don't know what all of these do. So, But if you're interested and you have zero dollars to spend on doing HDR, this is certainly an option. You probably want to take some time and figure out all of these settings. Now, that said, let's go look at something else much more robust. So this is HDR EFX Pro 2. This is part of the NIC software package and uh, now owned by Google. Uh, one of the other NIC products that is out there is Snapseed, as that's the little photo editor. I have that on my Android devices and absolutely love that app. That is called Snapseed. Their, their uh, NIC software used to be incredibly expensive. Google bought it, bundled it all together, and is now selling somewhere between $140 and $130, depending on whether or not you have a coupon code. Look down below this video if you are interested in checking out more about the NIC software stuff. Um, I do have a coupon code I was just alerted to by my friend Zach the other day, so thanks to him for letting me know about that. So, now, first thing I need to do is get my images in here. I exported them out as JPEGs from Lightroom. So I'm going to go to Open Images. I have my three images in the little HDR folder I'm going to open. It's going to load them up 
And the first thing that's going to walk me through is alignment and ghosting reduction. So as I mentioned, uh, you want to use a tripod most of the time when you're shooting in HDR because you don't want the computer to have to do a lot of work about aligning things up. And in certain cases, it's just not going to be able to align them up. Uh, even though I use the tripod, I'm going to leave these checked alignment ghost reduction. So maybe there is, uh, you know, very likely if we zoomed way in on the leaves in the background, there was a slight breeze from one image to another. Even though I used the tripod, those leaves were moving around a little bit. So there may be some ghosting there. And working on getting rid of chromatic aberration. Let's ramp that up a little bit and see if we can get up here into the corner where I said that there was some. Yeah, you can really see that purple fringing up there. Let's just increase that a good bit and say create HDR. Now you say, whoa, that was super simple. There were, I thought you said there was going to be a lot of options. So that is just the sandwiching of these images. Now it is working here, I believe. And um, in a second or two, it's going to pop up the image. And now we have this whole preset library you can see that's grayed out currently of architecture style, artistic, realistic, landscape, surreal, and you can even put some into favorites. Then within that, over on the right, you have options inside here. So let's, how did it do up there? Not so great, still a lot of chromatic aberration up there. I can see it right there. I tell you what, if I was truly looking to put this image out there for people to look at, I would probably do some cropping and just get rid of that top section to begin with. But let's say we're stuck with this image a client has given us and this is what we um, want. I really just love these quick thumbnails here and a huge number of them. And right there. I think that is pretty good. We want to watch out for halos around your dark and your light areas, but let's just real quick go in here and look at some of the surreal Granny's Attic, pale and structured, sinister. Let's see what this house looks like, sinister. That doesn't really come across as sinister, but certain, top, uh, certain compositions and other houses probably would in scenes. So you really have a huge variety of options and those are all built into the HDR FX Pro. And as I said, you can go over here and mess with those as well. Now, there are other options as well. On the Mac, you have the HDRist, HD Artist Pro. Isn't that smart how they do that? It's only 30 bucks. They have a try it version. You also have probably one of the leaders is the HDR Soft Photomatics. Just $39 for the Photomatics Essentials. Pro is $99. And then the other free option that I mentioned was the Luminance HDR. So again, just a real quick look at HDRs and kind of consider that this is what HDR is. This is how you put them together after creating your three images or more. You can certainly put in more images going from a very extreme five stops underexposed to um, you know five stops overexposed into a series of six or seven images that then get sandwiched together. You're not limited to three. Three is your kind of typical standard system. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions about HDRs, I'd be happy to answer them. I honestly don't do a ton myself. Uh, I just don't, uh, but I do think they are pretty cool. So leave a comment down below or come over and find me on Facebook. Thanks for watching.